was just to express my excitement for the fact that we're having everybody return that put their name in the draft and, and we're just going to test the waters. And obviously to have you know Lamar, Q, Nick, and Eric all back uh, and uh, with the rest of the nucleus we have returning and the guys that we're adding, it's a really exciting time uh, for me and our staff, our fans, uh, the university uh, in anticipation of the 2018-19 season in men's basketball. Uh, really excited. So I, I'm just thrilled. Uh, I think our players are thrilled. Everybody's in happy times for them right now for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is they're done with school <laughs> and have a little break. But uh, just, you know, I think we're going to have a tremendous summer and uh, really looking forward in our preparation for this coming season. Uh, because uh, of the fact that we expect to be, uh, you know, a good team, we've really upgraded our schedule, and you'll get more information on that here soon. We actually have a, a letter that uh, of agreement being sent via email right now to me for a game that uh, we hope to have put together against a team that was in the Sweet 16 this last year. We already know we're playing in the tournament out against. Uh, Arizona State and then uh, either NC State or Utah State in that second game. Uh, I, I'm hopeful that we're going to have, uh, we're going to play Long Beach State, which you know, has always been tough. And Dan Munson does a great job. We're going to play, looks like we don't have a signed agreement yet, but what has what is been agreed upon is to play Wright State uh, December 22nd up in Jackson, which is a Saturday. We'll do an afternoon game. With Always love to do that before Christmas. They're picked to win their league. We'll have a returning all league center, 6'9, 300 pounds, a really good player and a good team. Uh, obviously, we have Cincinnati coming here. We have BYU that was just announced yesterday after Christmas, which is always a very good program. Dave Rose does a tremendous job, and they always have the advantage of having return missionaries that are 24 and 25 years old. I mean, it's an outstanding basketball tradition and history. Uh, so uh, our schedule is really being, you know, at Dayton is just going to be, a, you know, the reason why they hold the first four in in Dayton, Ohio every year is they have amongst the best fans in the United States of America for basketball. It is sold out. They sell out every game. I was talking, my, one of my former players at University of Pittsburgh, Ricardo Greer, is on their staff. And they played the Dominican or somebody in Division Three. I can't remember who it was this year, sold out. I mean, they're there every night. It's going to be a, a very, uh, you know, difficult environment to play in. Uh, and uh, that would be really good for our guys. So this non-conference schedule is uh, really going to be uh, challenging and tough, which will be good for us. This team, the kind of experience we have returning uh, and, and as we, you know, look towards the SEC, which we expect will be as tough, if not tougher than it was this year, when it had the most teams ever in the history of the league invited to the NCAA tournament, eight. And so, uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited and I wanted to share that with you all. Questions? How many games left do you guys have for the non-conference schedule that you have to Two, say? we think, you know, two, maybe three. And, uh, you know, there's 13 total that we'll play because of the tournament. So we think we have 10 done, and uh, you know the other announcement I have is that uh, you know for your guys' awareness, if you did know this, uh, Michael Moynihan is now a full-time assistant at UNC Asheville, uh, which is an exciting situation because it's a brand new staff. Where Mike Morrell, who was Shock Smart's assistant, has taken over that program. Historically, very good program if you look at their success. Uh, over the last 20 years. So I'm really excited for Mike, uh, as well as uh, Jalen Courtney, who is full-time assistant now, now at McNeese State, with Heath Scheuer, who's another very good coach, uh, and a proven veteran coach, and a good program. So really excited for those two guys. And so I've been working feverishly here, trying to fill, you know, fill those spots. And, and uh, we'll have announcements on those two spots being filled real soon here. Uh, here in the, in the coming days. Do you expect any other turnover in the staff? 
Well, just we lost our two GAs and we're trying to fill those two positions, which, uh, you know, uh, I hope that will, will occur. And we have real quality guys that I'm hoping we'll, we'll be able to get that done. But, so there's a lot of turnover when you come to, you know, and our GAs were great. I mean, Alfred and Boya and Bo Rodriguez did a phenomenal job. I mean, Alfred is like, uh, you know, one of my favorite all-time players I've ever coached. And his influence every day in terms of enthusiasm, how hard you play, you know, just his energy every day that he brought to practice was incredible. If you asked our players, they would tell you that. And he was able to play defense and drills and play defense on these guys. And, you know, that, that, that's like a high-level man playing defense and, and showing the kind of energy and toughness it takes uh, when you're playing. I mean, every day, every minute of every day. And you know, graduated in a year and a half. Bo, phenomenal student. Bo, I've known since he was born. You know, couldn't be a more loyal, hardworking guy. So we, we have a lot to replace in those four guys, no question. Did those two guys get assistant jobs? Or? They're still working at it. You know, it's harder, you know, moving mm -hmm. up from GAs than it is from ops and video. They will land on their feet for sure. With the uh, four guys returning, I know you had mentioned a while back one of the barometers was, hey, if you're going to get first round, then go. If not, maybe it's better to stay. But beyond that, what, what are some of those conversations like when in, the, in the process of trying to figure out what to do? You know, one of the things is, is you go through the process of filling out the NBA uh, advisory council or advisory draft, which you know, gives them feedback as to where they be drafted based on uh, where they are now before they do any workouts, before they do anything for the teams. Uh, part of it is, you know, I thought was really interesting, I did not know this, that the 2019 draft is, is not nearly as uh, strong as this year's draft because the 2018 high school class that's coming in this year is, is not as uh, full of first uh, lottery picks that for sure are in. Like, you know, this year they have Aiton you know, from Arizona. They have Bagley, you know, at Duke. You've got Porter who was, you know, these guys were locks to be in the top seven picks. There was a number of players. And uh, in the case of this coming draft, and you're talking to all the experts, you know, uh, you know, people that this is what they do for a living, is evaluating this and including all the scouts and different NBA people and agents that I've been talking with. It, this will be a really good draft and an opportunity for guys that are uh, not just freshmen, but you know players that are upperclassmen, because uh, it opens up more opportunities for that first round positions. Uh, so that was a key factor in some of the decisions. I mean, just getting good advice and just seeing how this whole thing works. Uh, but I think that uh, you, know, you know the way we. Uh, Finished our season, the last half of our season, really, uh, you know, I think you brought up, you know, that there's no proof that in the NIT it's any difference. I, I would su suggest that when you don't have any seniors and everybody's returning and you went to postseason play in the NIT and you had success, that that would be a good positive for this next year's team. How many times will tell? That said, what do you feel about the uh, expectations? Saw some like national analysts say that this is a top twenty, top twenty-five team. How do you feel about that? Great. I mean, about. I hope they I hope that uh, their uh, their expertise proves valid. <laughs> Where's the uh, health of the team? Right? Does anybody have any off-season procedures or yeah, anything? Yeah, you know, we had. Uh, I think I mentioned this that uh, Keyshawn Pissell had a, a surgery on his foot, a bone that was causing problems throughout the whole year on his heel. Uh, he's uh, you know, still dealing with that and spinning the boot, and so that'll be a process. And he should be, hopefully, you know, close to being back to full strength by June 1st. You know, he's got this month, and he's going to be home for a good part of that. So, you know, Ryan and he are working closely together on that. Uh, Lamar banged knees uh, the other day in workouts, and so he, he's been out for a little bit, but it doesn't seem like it's anything too serious. Uh, so Nick and Q, you know, Eric's doing well. So, uh, you know, Abdul is doing really well. He took off yesterday and is excited. You know, Tyson will be here uh, the whole time lifting and working. Uh, so he, he gets started right away. Uh, we'll, we'll reconvene.
green, freshmen have to arrive the 29th for orientation. Uh, the, the returnees will be here on the 30th, and then classes start uh, that next day. So they get a little break, which is well deserved. You think about it, our season, you know, we started, uh, you know, in June, July, had the 10 days in August. So we've been going in August all the way straight through to March 27th. I mean, it, it didn't get a lot of a break because during spring break, we were still playing, still competing. So th this would be a good break. Guys would be working out. Uh, guys would be doing stuff on their own. But uh, when we get back, it's the beginning of our season. This It starts you know, basically June 1st. That's when it starts up again. Actually, we get eight weeks. One of the great new uh, rules that they've come up with, we get four hours now with our guys on the floor during these eight weeks as opposed to what used to be two hours. Believe me, that's a big difference. Uh, just to get that extra time to work with them, work on their skills, work on their shooting, work on refining their shot. I'm really excited that they made that change. So now it's four hours for the coaches, four hours for the strength and conditioning. And that's how it breaks down to your eight hours a week, which isn't a lot of time. I mean, you know, some guys can work eight hours in a day, uh, like most of you. But it's, it's, it's good. Do you have any scholarships left? We have one. You know, we actually have a kid coming in to visit uh, line, uh, tomorrow night. And he uh, will be here uh, Friday and then heading out Saturday. But we have one scholarship to give as of right now. Ideally, what do you want that player to be? A really good one. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that also that uh, you only had a couple more left to schedule as far as opponents go. Do you expect them to be Power 5 opponents? Uh, it remains to be seen. You know, it's jockeying for, for stuff. But, yeah, our schedule is already uh, going to be very uh, highly ranked. You know, like Wright State was in, you know, the Bob, you know, top 100. I mean, you know, hard for him to Top two, and I mean, like, you know, we're, we're scheduling good people. You know, Cincinnati, uh, and, and the other team I was talking about that we should be able to announce hopefully by the end of next week is a top 20. We will have a couple of top 20 opponents. I mean, NC State finished way high. I mean, I forgive me. If we get a chance to play there, it means, you know, obviously we'd have to win.